We'd asked this question, which was, when I was doing all of those exciting, interesting things, then what happened? So, to skip this very slightly, I think I decided to start making things which were beautiful because the world had turned a bit nasty and I decided to fill it up with <laughs> nice things. things. Yeah, so it was slightly less, went a bit less wacky. Um, but actually I made 49 different extraordinarily simple fragrances for scent trunk that was owned by an individual at the time. They sold it to Perfumer's Apprentice, which is good. And um, he kept talking about their team of perfumers, and it was me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is it about this industry? Um, anyway, we did that. Uh, oh, there were the three. You really just said. You just said. Um, he kept talking about we this team of perfumers. It was just you. Yeah. And they said anyway. We had. As if there was 47 oh, yeah, perfumers. Oh, 47 of us, yeah. But then we, <laughs> you the plural. 162 stays, we, we here, yeah, that's right. We and my 46 <laughs> yeah. helpers, we made, then, um, yeah. Do you remember the three stinks we had to do for Febreze? No. You're fortunate. You were probably working in Australia at the time or something. Possibly. They wanted three really uh, smelly things that you might encounter at Christmas. They originally wanted, I think, sprouts, blue cheese, and farts. <laughs> but I think then... farts is, is, is appropriate. Blue cheese is lovely. Yeah. The smell of blue cheese. Yeah, we had to go for that because um, the, client, the client vetoed farts. Really? But they had to be things which Febreze could fix. And so we were testing them all in like the large loo at the old studio that had a good, a good fan. Mm. I had to test these things and then spray for Febreze and see they worked and they went in the press pack. And did they work? Yeah. Did Febreze work? How does Febreze work? Does it just mask it? Because they say no, that No, it no. It's much more uh, interesting. It actually encapsulates. Yeah, they say that on the advert, but I've always gone, really? Yes, really. Really? It's so exciting. Molecular encapsulation is the, yeah. the thing. It's the thing at the moment. It's how, um, it's how your clothes smell fresher for... Yeah, so I, I knew about microencapsulation in 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 um, fabric softener. Yeah, so those are things which which they're already encapsulated, and if you sort of touch them, they just break and release out. Yeah. But there's the other way where you can ha have a, a a a molecule that reacts. I need both hands. Reacts. So you've got that one stinky. Another one yeah. just comes along and goes. We don't smell anymore. Let's just, just go fits away. Just into it. Wow. Yeah. But wow. it doesn't work on everything, which is why we had to test them around at our place. And I thought, it's so nice of the PR company to come over. How kind, going all the way to Acton. No, it's because in case they didn't work and they stank out their own offices. So interesting. So when you buy a bottle of Febreze, you're, you're buying some pretty, pretty impressive chemistry. Oh, the, the, the technology. Uh, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's the good thing about microencapsulation. The really good thing is that people's clothes don't smell so quickly so they can wear them for days yeah. without washing them mm -hmm. uh, in a good way and saving loads of water and um, detergents and but things. the where but this isn't a lecture on micro encapsulation well no I had more, I had we could probably talk about it for an hour and I was going to try and stick to the point yeah let's <laughs> sorry okay so um, yeah I was making some for Sarah Baker at the time I did the Laurel can, can, Canyon candle, which never yeah. happened, but yeah, many things which never happened. Um, uh, oh, St. Paul's Cathedral Library. Okay, that, unfortunately, I'd signed a thing, an academic thing that said on this particular project, uh, there would be no financial gain ever involved. And that was when I was going to be a PhD supervisor. But as part of this project, I was asked to make the fragments for St. Paul's Cathedral Library. And then St. Paul's Cathedral said, can we sell it at the shop? I was like, 
No, you can't. It breaks my heart. But anyway, so I made that from vanillin because it's very much smelly. because you wouldn't get any money well um no because i no one is allowed to make money from the, the this project that it was right. attached to so wow yeah goodness I, know. I might just do it anyway see if they come after me mm. yeah mm -hmm. um but yeah uh vanillin black tea tobacco absolute saffron cedars atlas and virginian cocoa extract frankincense oak wood and karma wood that's how i made the smell of st paul's cathedral though which was... I do, I remember that one. Oh, I've still got some downstairs. Yeah. Because I can't sell it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's, uh, we don't do it for the money after, do we? Because... No. If we did... We probably wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say we. Yep. Pause. Uh, things for clients that never happened. Ah, oh my soul. Now that's an interesting one. Because in Oh My Soul 2017, that was working with Christy Long and the Oh My Soul Facebook group. Mm -hmm. And the group members were allowed to vote for their favourite materials. Well, well their favourite notes, they say, they, what they wanted it to smell of. Mm -hmm. And I ended up incorporating sandalwood, vanilla absolute, vanillin, patchouli, labdanum, Sanginol, Rose Absolute, Dorinia, which is a rose base, Frankincense, Benzoin, Oris, Tobacco Absolute, Bergamot, couple of three musks, four musks, um, Nerily, Oak Moss, uh, I thought I said a Poppinax, obviously not a Poppinax, Lavender, uh, Cognac, Vetiver, another incense, uh, and amorous tuberose. Yeah, that's it. That, uh, I think that was it. But that's, it smells astonishingly not terrible for the amount of it's, naturals there are in there. It's a great one, yeah. And that was the scent of a warm group hug. Yeah. Which we can't have now, so you can have, have that instead. Um... But that that was an interesting thing. It was if somebody you've got hundreds of people voting for their favourite smells, like make it so we can all smell our favourite thing in it. Mm -hmm. But if somebody knows that their favourite thing is it is in it, then they'll smell it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was crowdfunded because we like crowdfunding. Was that the first of your crowdfunding thing? No, no the crowns of passion. Crowns of passion. But before that, I mm -hmm. did one called Ten Cents Worth. And that was 2011, before I even left the, the yeah. house. Um, had some very, very early ones in that. Uh, but what I did in my holidays was in there. I think Invisible Ben. Um, and people got tiny little chemistry vials mm. of them. I think, I think I did the first cent crowdfunding. What? Right. Um, if not, there's more for cent crowd. Uh, ah... Ah, uh, then we did the rhubarb and custard in 2017 because we were moving into really comforting, familiar fragrances at that point. Um, just n not the wild stuff, but the things that reminded us of happiness. Which is why I set up the company in the first place, of course, to make fragrances mm -hmm. that remind people of happy times and places. Um, so, yes, we did... The vanilla custom crumble, mm -hmm. now called creamy vanilla crumble. We did rhubarb, which is became the rhubarb and citrus cologne, the one that accidentally smells like cannabis. And then we put them together to get the balance, and it turned out at the proportion you probably know. One twenty nine. One to twenty nine. One part rhubarb to twenty nine parts custard turned out to be balanced perfectly. Mm surprisingly but that that endures i think rhubarb and custard is one of my favorite that is the one that made it into nate magazine so far and then we finished that book on uh, on a bell curve <laughs> a chart to demonstrate where we are in the perfume world which is like that end and that end you either love it or you hate it and here is the is the sweet spot for big commercial perfumes which have to be 
didn't have one, but mm -hmm. not not too strong an emotion either way, because um, that's where the money is. Mm -hmm. Book finished. Um, I sort of want to find truth, beauty, freedom, love. I'm not sure where I've lost it. Oh, and then I started working for Lorenzo and Ryan. Who that was 2017. It took them a while. It was at Vaunt. Yeah. They now launched Hoo Ha. Yeah. We've known them four years. Wow. Yeah. So we made those. Um, a few of those. Yeah, Truth, Beauty, Freedom, Love came about because, and that is its wonderful bottle. We we met. You know when we did we did Bob. Do a. Can you see that? Yeah. You know what? I'll do a special of it now so i'll cut it in now okay and then i'll and then we're back <laughs> excellent bob remember doing bob yeah it was called best of britannia back in the day um, yeah when we could export uh mm -hmm. it was uh, uh we went to shoreditch that lovely old, yeah with that that was the second year the first I year i didn't go to the first year you not that was down in i was in australia clark and well yeah we we were in this lovely old building that was used mostly for filming television things, claiming mm. it to be Victorian or the 1930s. Mm. And it was, oh, it was amazing. Uh, cold, but wonderful. And uh, then the following year, in the old Truman Brewery, That's it, yeah. we met Dalian and Noble, who were designing scarves, and we did a joint scarf perfume project. I mean, right. it ended up quite odd, because, you know, we, we decided what... To, Put in it when they visited and chose all the things that they liked so I incorporated those and they were going to sell the perfume off their website and I was going to sell the scarf and and then they decided that the last minute after I'd paid for all the scarves uh, they didn't need any perfume so we didn't I work know I know. we didn't work together again because uh, I paid for the design for the scarf and bought the scarves and, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. But it was a lovely project. But nice scarves. Yeah, gorgeous scarves, which incorporated the iris and the violets and the hay and the tobacco mm -hmm. and all the lovely things. And then the specially printed bottle has irises on it. Yeah, it's a lovely bottle. Which, yeah, so it ended up lovely. But I called it Truth, Beauty, Freedom, Love in the spirit of the Bohemians because I thought the world was a bit short of that at the time. Mm -hmm. um, Still is. Yeah. And it was indeed a it was a very it was a very fruity fragrance really. It was quite peach apricotty. Mm. But with hay and tobacco and orris. So it's becoming a bit of a theme of mine I think. Um so that that occurred. Oh I see. I've I left some spare pages. I wondered why I cut to 2019, but that's because I left some spare pages for some extra mods that I didn't ever do. We did White Queen, and that was working with Safleur Bon, but with Michelin, and the brief was make a, a fragrance, my usual kind of fragrance with my favourite things in, but a non-sweet gourmand and it was the the white queen from Alice in Wonderland as mm -hmm. far as I was concerned so it was underground quite muddy and then popping out the other side to a weird world of the unexpected mm. oh, oh, all right here's here's truth beauty freedom love but it was called it's in the book it's called scarf <laughs> <laughs> that's that it was so yeah vanilla Oris, Iron Beta, Hay, Bergamot, Carrot Seed, Tobacco, Amiris, which is like, smells like sandalwood if you get the right one, Bitter Almond, Maltol, Methyl Ionone, Gamma, Gamma Undecalactone, which is peachy, Vanillin, the Apricot Natural Liquid, which is from Robert T, like the ones we were talking about last week. Um, Benzyl acetate was quite honeyish, beeswax, benzyl salicylate, and bretolide, which is a that musk which is those top middle base. Mm -hmm. Hydroxy citronella, which smells like the leaf of the valley, nectaryl, which is 
See, I think of it smelling like nectar. So I think of it as honeyish, but other people think it smells like nectarines. But it has both in common. Mm. And some Cape chamomile, which came from South Africa, which is very lovely. So I made that. Oh, Le Jardin de Monsieur McGregor. I had predicted that there was a... Um, like there was going to be a rise in vegetable fragrances. <laughs> uh, because I thought we, we, we would, we'd, we'd done puddings. We'd, there'd been a lot of puddings. Um, a lot of gourmands. They'd gone, it's gone ultra sweet. It'd gone Prada candy. So my prediction was that we would go uh, down the vegetable garden. Leeks. Leeks. Uh, there is there is a leek essential oil. You kind of don't want it in the leek. We really? had some, we had some onion. It yeah, yeah. Remember the onion. Everything smell. I eventually just had to go. I had. Didn't you use it? I used it in up the apples and pears. That's right. Yeah. That's oh yeah, that's we went, right. When we went really crazy. Really, yeah. Re yeah. Really crazy. That was a crazy fragrance. Which is the one that Maximilian, Max, Maximilian knows, Max put it in his 10 most outrageous fragrances ever. He put that at number one. Mm, it is. <laughs> the most. Yeah. It's bonkers. I made it slightly as bonkers, but you know, if you're going to make the aroma of a 1930s London pub. It's got to have onion, uh, onions in it. It had onion soup and bread. Um, Eventually, I left it just at the bread and took out the onions. Yeah, I love, it. I love onions. But Le Jardin de Monsieur McGregor. Yeah. Perfume joke, also, um, obviously, um, Beatrix Potter yeah. reference. Mm -hmm. Because Hermes do a lot of Le Jardin series. And they, just, they have a lot of head yearning with many other interesting things. So this is actually 80% Hedio and 20% all the other things that smell like the garden. Mm. And it's, you know, I wanted to be basically Peter Rabbit running down the shed toward, well, in the garden towards Mr. McGregor's shed. So what, um, what veggies, what veggies have we got? In it? Parsnip essential oil. Of course. Carrot seed. Mm -hmm. uh, cucumber, 100% natural from Roberti. Hay. I use Sistri Hexanol, which is the... Smells like cut grass. Thank you. <laughs> Keep it in the yellow cupboard. It's <laughs> important. Um, I then went with strawberry, uh, which is a one of those naturals, again, made up of uh, other natural isolates. I put rose and lavender geranium and violets and iris in there. Then we had the shed, so we had patchouli and cedar moss and... Um, tobacco for Mr. McGregor's pipe. Um, vetiver, some mint, uh, jasmine, lily, leather, which is actually I used vetiver to create the leather fragrance. Mm -hmm. Mushroom absolute, 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 mushroom absolute. Um, pink grapefruit. I don't know. They wouldn't be growing there, but there wouldn't be any grapefruit. pink grapefruits. Certainly not. Yeah, stay down there. Um, and uh, Cassie Space 345B, which is the black currant smell, and celery herb. There would definitely be some celery there. There would. Yeah. Maybe not all of these things at the same time, but that was it. S some of them don't, don't uh, they're not in season with each other. No. So, it, but it's maybe the garden over a year with a slight bit of Mediterranean sun for the grapefruits. Absolutely, or possibly in grapefruit, more like. Miami? Yeah, a bit of Miami. You know. uh, so yeah, so there was a, there was a shed accord. <laughs> and then, um, oh yeah, so some uh, musk in there as well. But that was, that's for shed. I think sheds smell very nice. I always like sheds. Yeah. Like when the wood is relaxed enough that the sap starts coming out of it. That. I had black pepper in the shed as well. I mean, I think the shed was is so old that the sap's... Long gone. Long things evaporated. Well, yeah. So, so that was my that was my prediction was that vegetables would rule the earth. Is is your prediction is that correct? Has that happened? I'm not very you know plugged in with that. Yes. Well, ish. I mean, what started to happen was then. Um, I mean, German and London had some quite uh, English gardeny ones out there. Maybe not quite as mm. all encompassing as everything I wanted to put in that garden, and using things like barley and. Things that actually I don't think 
have a smell necessarily, but no. there's a references to English countryside. I'm not sure that everyone else is that. No doubt coincidence. It wasn't at all. I think uh, root veg is is. We're gonna get carried away. I was about to ask you if ginger's a vegetable. Ginger's not a vegetable. Yeah, it's, it's, a it's a tuber. It's a, yeah, it is a it is a root. But oh yeah, the root vegetable thing was that I'm surprised they didn't put spinach absolute in this. It, it I feels it like it like needs it. spinach. Yeah, I probably would have done if I made it again. But I sent some spinach, absolute. When Harry was working for Christophe Lourdes Miel, I sent him some spinach, absolute. Oh, yeah. Um, and Christophe's response was, "That is why we need people like Sarah." So the second, because because he hadn't heard of spinach, absolute, yeah. because it's not in the, the mainstream. Yeah. So. I asked Harry if he wanted some parsnip essential oil, to which his answer was no. What is this English obsession with root vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> so that was pushing it too far, so he didn't want the parsnip. Yeah. It's quite irisy, because these things that grow underground, they've got some muddiness to them. Yeah. Oh, now the orange tree, which was just about to hit Korea, and which we were bottling. Yeah, I've just bottled all of it. Very morning. Oh, well done. Mm -hmm. I haven't um, labelled it, but I've bottled it all. And that, that's an extremely simple formula, and it was done for an event concerning a company that had certain orangeness in its name, I do believe. And they had some, got some lots of live orange trees, and they needed needed them to smell a bit more orangey. And came to me and said, "I make as I did." And then what happened is the actual author of the Prior of the Orange Tree came to visit, Sam, and uh, she's really interested in perfume fragrance. She came with P.M. Freestone, who wrote um, the one I made the darkest bloom for. You know, um, the um, Rivers of London. That no, no, not that one. It's Right, now, I, it, it, and I know it's called, so there's this crown of smoke, and there's the darkest bloom, and they're called... Um, I've got mm. the sign book down says what am I doing? PM Streeson. I've got a hashtag. Shadow scent. Shadow scent. Thank you so much. Right, shadow scent. Yeah. So she brought Samantha down. Samantha. And so I said, oh look, here it is. This is the orange tree I made earlier. Mm -hmm. And she she was slightly gobsmacked because it smelled just like an orange tree. And it really know, does. You know, why don't I release it? Yeah. So I got its certification all done. Because uh, it had just been a room fragrance, mm -hmm. but same thing. So I got it, and it's it's fine. So it's um, sweet orange and clementine and yellow mandarin and blood orange and um, uh, pettigrain from the orange tree one, um, and I saw super and a couple of other things. It does stand yeah. out. It does stand out apart from from all of your other fragrances because it is one single solitary thing. Yeah. That you've it's it's not like a. A, a, a mood or a... It's very experience. literal. It's yeah. like every orange tree you ever smell, that is yeah. like... But that's one of the reasons why it's so good is because do you want to smell like an orange tree? The answer is usually yes. Yeah. Can't think of many people who wouldn't want to smell like an orange tree. No, it's been extraordinarily popular. Yeah. Um, so, right yeah, as you say, it's, it's like the opposite of trying to make a 1930s pub, really. You know, imagine the, the weirdest thing that nobody alive has actually ever been to. <laughs> um... And instead, just just make an orange tree, just yeah. something lovely and reassuring. And you've got quite a lot of that in freeway as well, like the orange, the orange smell. That's true. That was earlier. That's got its yeah. whole other film, hasn't it? I should yeah. remind people it's there with you and me. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, because yeah, freeway. That's that's yeah. Okay, the future of. Um, San Francisco, no, Los Angeles, Los Angeles. highways mm -hmm. after the oil's run out and it's all evaporating from the surface of the freeways and there are orange trees down the side of the road and there are wildflowers and lots of people having picnics. Mm. That, so Lovely. that's a bit, that's, yes, that, you know, yeah, but that was before the weird cut off. Wasn't yeah. It? I think that's 2016. Yeah. Um, and then some interesting events collaborating with the Royal College of Art. Kiss me quickly. Oh, I was still making weird stuff. I never expected anyone to buy that. It's too weird. I, but it's that was, weird. It's that's weird. the smell of the fun fair after dark when the kids have gone home and the teenagers are all hanging out. And snogging. The, snogging. 
that's smoking, the, the music's turned up, the rides are all going faster, and it's all a bit hot oil. And yeah. so, um, rose oxide with the, this, the, the last week when it was being bottled, it me in a bit, whoa. Yeah. That's just odd. It's Lost Boys. Oh, you're right. It's lost, but it's, you know, that, that's so many scenes that what you just described just put me in mind of that film. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, yes. So it's the, the Homo Furunel, the toffee one for toffee apples, and I use Granny Smith apple from Film and Niche. Um, so we've got toffee apples and candy floss and seaweed. So there's the smell of the, 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 the beach, the, the harbour blowing mm. in. Um, Betty Bear for the 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 old leather seats on the whirly thing, the teacups, whatever. Um, the Virginian tobacco for the people having to smoke around the back of the stalls. Um, and that's about it. And Aldehyde C10, which I don't really like, but it needed that sh sharp, metallic machinery feel. Yeah. And that was for Dulwich Picture Gallery. For an Edward Borden exhibition, yeah, I think so about about the seaside. So that was a, for a late at Dulwich. Yeah. In the summer of twenty eighteen. Yeah. Uh, I oh, and then I did my better version of Over the Chocolate Shop. Oh, is that I, there, there was a very of... very early one, but uh -huh. I didn't know what the hazelnut was that was in it. I just did it for my friend who lived over a chocolate shop. Uh -huh. So I remade it with uh, everything with, uh, you know, not for a room fragrance. I remade it as a fragrance for Le Gâteau Chocolat. Yes. The Magnificent. Um, yeah. And delivered it. <laughs> well known as the best smelling man in cabaret. <laughs> apparently. So I'm, I'm just getting some more. Um, so yes, and that's very simple. Uh, but needs filtering at least four times at least because they're extract yeah yeah cocoa coffee <clears throat> not co2 vanilla absolute vanilla nice oil super boom yeah um i wish it wasn't such a bestseller it's such a pain oh and then we went to <laughs> kazakhstan oh yeah and that was secret for years and they just launched last year this year last year yes aura of kazakhstan kazakhstan's first ever perfume company we went over there of course after Olga had come to visit with her friend mm -hmm. and uh, yeah and her and her I think it's her, her mother-in-law who's about the same age of her oh yes 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 you only course, ever woke yeah. up when you walked by <laughs> I didn't say that out loud oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah um, so she came round and to learn about how you make perfume and then at the end of the meeting her friend said Olga likes you. She would like you to make her perfumes. Will you come to Kazakhstan? Like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so yeah, that was um, yeah September. Uh, we went off to Kazakhstan and I made a lot of fragrances. Mm -hmm. Of which four made it into the collection. They ended up with nine. So um, cut my story short. Pause. Well, and then we had to start looking for a new building because our lease was running out and we couldn't get hold of anyone to tell us how much the new rent was going to be, but we knew it was going to be about 50% more. So we went looking for a new building. And we found one which was just near the river in Brentford. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to move in wanted to move in, in a month and we still had a year on the old lease. I mean, we don't want to do that. But we, a maid, take me to the river for that reason. So we crowdfunded Take Me to the River to see if we could get together the deposit that they needed for the building. Um, and that was kind of based on the feeling that you get from listening to Talking Heads version of Take Me to the River, um, 1980 uh, live version. Uh, so there was the temptation accord and the chair, there's a big leather chair that I just imagined thousands of people sitting on over the years and smoking and drinking because mm. it was 1980 when people used to smoke in clubs and then a wine and roses accord which 
I was not sure where to go and I just woke up this m one particular morning and I just went, I need roses in it! <laughs> and Nick's accustomed to this now. <coughs> yeah, so, and, and in fact the Temptation Accord, we then released by itself, <laughs> because it's, it's so lovely, just, it's just long-lasting, long-lasting big things, mm -hmm. plus 100% synthetic. Plus and also video. lends itself remarkably well to being customised. Totally, yeah. Like I was saying about some things are full and some things still have spaces in them to yeah. do things with. Temptation is one with space to put lots of things on top of Temptation it. is a plinth. A plinth? Yeah. You're right. The plinth in, in and of itself is beautiful. It's a nice plinth, mm -hmm. but you can put something on it. Yeah. Well, the, the perfect pasta. Or the perfect pasta, of yeah. As perfumery goes, yeah. Um, so the chair... Could you make a pesto accord? <laughs> <laughs> I want to walk around smelling of pesto. Well, yeah, perfumery, um, not literal, but perfume, yeah, well, okay, basil and pistachio. Um, <laughs> yes, so, uh, I, there has been, there have been some people, mostly men actually, saying that they have been, that people smell this thing on them and just go, what is that? What, temptation? Yeah, uh, no. Take me to the river. Take me to the river. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the one I've had blagged off me most. Yeah. When I've been wearing it, and people are going, "What is it? Where can I get it?" And they're like, "Oh, oh why? You can have it." Yeah. It's, it's the the one the the fragrance. I mean, I only wear it occasionally because I'm almost dead. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what have I done? I've unleashed. I think lots of people are very. I have to try it again. I'm smelling it. Yeah, yeah. Wear it. Yeah. I'm when I get in the tube again. But you know, I mean. I know lots of perfume companies, that's what they want to make, and it's, it's, they've made it and then they tell everybody, like, this happens when you wear it, and me, I'm a bit like, oh, I don't know, <gasps> I'm not sure I should allow it out, um, but you know. And then we did, I did Wash Me in the Water as part, yeah, so, um, yes, part two, Wash Me in the Water, so Take Me to the River came with Wash Me in the Water, um, which... I'm very, very fond of, and it's, I'm, I think other people probably think it's my style, but it's, it's the freshest and lightest, and there isn't any vanilla in it, uh, lots of herbs, um, many herbs, but it's the, it was, a, it's meant to be, so take me to the river, there was a big debate about whether or not it was the aroma of going home with the lead singer or the bass player. That was that was the debate on the on the forum, uh, the, the 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 group. Mm -hmm. um, and when Wash Me in the Water, because it was about uh, when you're in a sort of relationship, it isn't really a relationship. You think it is. They're drilling. And then they're drilling. Of course they are. It's real life. And then, thank you. <laughs> um, so you think you're in a relationship, but the other half of it doesn't think they're in a relationship, and you know it can't last but you're not prepared to end it yet. Yeah. That's Take Me to the River. Then Wash Me in the Water is like the next day and you think, oh, I can't do it again. And you just go off and jump in a lake somewhere like in a river and you just, you, you need the peppermint and the rosemary to restore your memory. And you need the frankincense for the cleansing. And then there's a lovely smell of soap, kind of bar of soap that you crack open and um, just, Wash yourself all over again and start. So it's a bit of a Sunday morning fragrance, yeah. which is not like me now, but you know. Um, but I'm very fond of it. And, you know, many other pages of things. But then London Craft Week. And really. <laughs> the point, the point of. The films really was to say where where did where do you get your ideas from? You know, people yeah. say where do you get your ideas from? It's more that these things happen, circumstances arrive, arise, things ideas arrive. Um, but then with London Craft Week, we were working with the Beaumont Hotel uh, to make 
fragrances inspired by people uh, whose portraits are in their lotus room downstairs. Mm -hmm. And I chose Lord Berners and Dolores del Rio and made burnt cedar rainbow doves for Lord Berners because uh, he, he was portrayed as Lord Merlin. He wasn't quite as good looking as Andrew, what's his name? Um, Lloyd Webber. <laughs> no, no different. Um, I wasn't uh, quite as good looking as Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> oh, everybody's as good looking as Andrew Lloyd Webber, sorry. Um, no, and, and the, the, the man who plays the master in Doctor Who, the, 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 the bad priest in... Oh, uh, Andrew Scott. Thank you, Andrew Scott. He was Lord Merlin in the recent um, Pursuit of Love. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Lord Berners was based on... No, Lord Merlin was based on Lord Berners. Lord Berners was real. Right. But he wasn't as good looking as Andrew Scott, that's all. Mm -hmm. So I made the fragrance for, inspired by Lord Berners, which was his rainbow doves. He used to dye the doves different colours and set them free in the garden. And he always had a cedar bonfire. So that I made and I really like that. It's a, it's a perfume in two halves. It actually has the rainbow doves with it. And then it's like, how, how can these, it's like... I don't know, bacon and eggs. You know that they're two separate things, mm -hmm. but you still smell them both at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, sugared almonds and bonfires. And then Dolores del Rio drive them wild because the newspaper article said that she wore perfume in her hair to drive men wild. I thought, let's drive everybody wild. So, uh, and she loved gardening. She had a garden in Hollywood, she had one in Mexico. So I made all white flowers and vanilla and spices and citrus fruits and we're going to run out of time, aren't we? But that's basically 2019. We've managed three years. We're not, we're not a bit that more. Far. Yeah. And then, and then clouds, which oh, yeah. became an immensely long fra fragrance project, which eventually we've had, I think, eight different fragrances based on this. And the one that's just come out is Complicated Shadows. Which yeah. is just about right for now. Because mm -hmm. everything, everywhere you look, it's like, well, that's bright and shiny, but it's complicated. But you're you're very proud of the clouds series, aren't you? I, you they it really like it feels like it really means a lot to you. Reluctant though I am ever to use the phrase proud of anything, pleased. I'm very pleased with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I am. I am pleased. Um, so we did, I did those of quite dark ones, which slightly shocked Christy at first. She wasn't expecting them to be that. Mm. Uh, uh, so I, I lightened it up, then that was too much. So it's it's a, uh, the Goldilocks and the Three Bears school of perfumery. So yeah. That's too dark. That's too light. So, so Fluffy Lemon Top, I named after an ice cream from Red Car by Besitos. Which is, I, I, which is, I, I love Fluffy Lemon Top, so it's my housemate Paco. Good. His, he buys it every day. And Jacques, my, <laughs> our friend Jacques, yeah. thinks it's just, he does, but he, he doesn't know how it just lasts forever. And yeah, it actually, does. And neither do I. It really but does, does last that yeah. It's an eau de parfum and it's just, it's So what yours. ties them all together, all the clouds? Ah, oh, Oris. Violet Venus. Um, the, the sunshine is sort of narcissus and citrus fruits. Mm -hmm. So uh, bergamot, cedra, I like, and lemon. Um, and then the cloudy bit. So there's some fluffiness, which is uh, what Christy from Oh My Soul actually asked for was a white chocolate ganache scent. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that <laughs> yeah F f fluffy fluffiness in in with there is vanilla in there there's a little bit of cocoa um and then the the grayness i kind of made with the oris and lavender but then there's the very dark shadow i have in some versions of it which yeah. is vetiver spot of white birch because that can get too strong mm -hmm. and oak moss yeah so what they're all made of is Similar, they're kind of all from the same range of materials, but you know, it, its heart is probably the Narcissus Oris balance. Yeah. And then the planets circulating around it are of different sizes. 
Yeah. And like the oak moss one is so it's tiny and then others like complicated shadow it's it's big. Yeah. And of course that project when we started off I knew what Christy would say. She said we would say, Can I have narcissus like egg run a kilo? Can I have vanilla? Can I have tonka kilo like, like yes? And then I knew she would say, and can it be really affordable? And the answer is no. <laughs> But, so what I did was I made one with all the naturals in and I made one with recreations of those. Mm -hmm. uh, like bases. Yeah. So that, uh, yes, the answer was, there was yes, you can. you can. And everybody who bought the expensive one got a sample of Clouds Illusion. Everyone who bought Clouds Illusion got a sample of Clouds, which was the more expensive one. Yeah. And everybody preferred the one they bought. Yeah. Uh, which is great. Uh, then, so I did clouds, but then I also brought out Fluffy Lemon Top because I love it so much. Mm, I love it. I love that perfume. And then I made both sides of clouds, mm -hmm. which was clouds and clouds illusion combined. Mm -hmm. Like, lesson to perfumers, never make six perfumes with the same name. Because <laughs> so there were parfum versions and there was all the parfum yeah, versions yeah. as well. So like, oh. It was also very, it was, bottling it and posting it was, was complicated. I, 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 I really apologise, but I will never do that again. But yeah. So I had a, like a white accord, a chocolate accord, a they don't know accord, which was uh, a, 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 my clouds. My, my clouds were timber silk, Vanillin, Exotolide Musk, Fixolide Musk, and Bretolide Musk. And for Urin, I put some Hedione in, not in the Parfum, but in the Eau de Parfum. So, that, it, 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 there's pages and pages and pages of it. I mean, that's like just, just one bit of calculations. Because I like to do them by hand. Um, and that's when Clouds Again, part two, became named Fluffy Lemon Top after my hometown and its favourite ice cream. And then finally, this year, I just decided it would, now is a good time to release Complicated Shadows. So it, it released on the day that the UK was supposed to be released from all of its mask wearing and constraints, it's like, as if. Yeah. So I thought everyone would have something to look forward to if they got perfume. Yeah. Um, and in the middle of that, I finally, after five years thinking, made Meet Me on the Corner which is named after a Lindisfarne song from, I think, 1972. Hey, Mr. Dreamseller. And it is an homage to my favourite citrus sheepers, which were around at the time, except it couldn't have been made then because it's made with new things, but it's to smell a bit retro, but as if it were brought out now. Yeah. But in honour of the time when, when you went out, you had to just meet where you said you would, because there weren't any phones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there were, but they were attached to boxes and walls and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm proud of that. I actually used the word. I used the word. I used there the we go. Word. I am. <laughs> I am actually proud of that. But. Yeah. Five years thinking about what, how to do it, and then the mandora arrived, and the magnolia leaf and the magnolia flower, and I knew, I had it, and the styrax, the low styrene styrax thought right now I can do this and I did I did one version and I did it straight up start to finish that is what I want boom and that's what it was yeah and that is what it remains and that took us pretty much to the end of 2019 apart from the darkest bloom which mm -hmm. I made for PM Freestone yeah the shadow scent <laughs> Exactly, Shadow Sent the Darkest Bloom, the book. Uh, kind of, sort of medieval fantasy novel oh, where... Is Darkest Bloom that recent? I thought it was older than that. No, it's... A, oh, unless that was... No, it's pretty... It's, oh, no, it was already out. The book uh, was out. But the, yeah. no, the fragrance... No, I mean, I'm talking about your fragrance. 2019. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, 2019 it was uh, finally done. And... Um, yeah, I, in fact, I think the final, we'd gone into lockdown before the final one came out. Um, and yeah, that's that's a kind of medieval smell of this flower called duck eye, which is a mythology, myth, myth, well, no, it's not even in myth, is it? Because it's fictional. Yeah, it's fictional. Yes, but it's the darkest flower, but it it has amazing powers and it, 
heals people. So, so yeah, we made that to go with the book. And that, then that brought us to 2020, which we should probably cover some other time. Yeah, my battery's about to run out. I do have another one. But... That's fine. Um, no, over the page, we're straight into 2020. <sighs> Deep breaths, thinking about 2020. Ah, oh, but then I started making the Waft from the Loft, which has its own film anyway. Oh, that was complicated. Oh, that's it. Homage to the Waft. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love the Waft. Um, yeah, that's so that got made. And then I think we'll we'll store that then for um, twenty twenty deserves a film of its own. I think so. And then we'll go back to talking about materials. Oh yes. Okay. Musks. Musks need to do. I want to do some more experiments before we make that film. Okay. Uh, yeah. I want to do. Uh, I want to do some withs and without some some fors and againsts. But I do want to talk about fruit. <laughs>